314 podcast presented by Sports Interaction, your homegrown sports book. Bet local today. And uh, not really much to talk about here, Ave. Uh, listen, I know it's two series into the season, but uh, not hitting the panic button yet. But my God, this offense, these three games were impo- like literally impossible to watch. And that's not even me being mean. None of that. That it, it was tough to watch, like borderline impossible. Zero runs in the last 29 innings, uh, nine hits in their last 29 innings, just impossible to watch. I, I, I don't know how we did it. Yeah, you you get no hit, which we, we talked about, and then you get one hit. Uh, in the same series. That's not a good series. That's not very it, good. And there's a legacy clutch home run as you'll ever have away with two outs in the bottom of the ninth from being swept and it being no runs scored all series, right? Yeah. The, the only time they scored runs was two outs in the top of the ninth with two strikes, I believe. Just yeah. that's not going to do it. For a team where we thought the offense was coming back, Johnny, the offense has not come back. <laughs> And my mentions are pretty bad right now uh, because obviously I speak glowing. I spoke glowingly about potential bounce backs. And maybe we got fooled in the spring from guys like uh, Varsho and stuff like that. But it's just, I think, and maybe it's because we watch this team so much, Avery. This is the only team on the planet that slumps together. (laughs) Like, it's bananas. Yeah, they talk about team chemistry. It's, they're, they're on the same cycle. Yeah, they they stink together all the time. I, um, I can't even wrap my head around it. Well, it's... you can wrap your head around it. We saw it all last year. Let's go. Positive note: they're three and four. They're not one in. They're three and four with the worst offense I've ever seen. That's a positive. Yes, that like, is a positive, and it blows my mind. But they did that all of last year, Avery. Yes. Well, like, let's look. Not that. Baseball is a tough sport to know how to win. It's you yes. score more runs than the other team. Let's just go through the scores, how the season's gone. They score eight runs. They win 8-2 game one. They lose and score two runs in game two. They score one run in game three, nine in game four, and then they go 0-2-0. Zero, zero. Uh, Johnny, <laughs> that's not a great start. It's but- not great. When they score runs, they win the game. Yeah. And they have had a tough time scoring runs. Um, we can talk about all this we want, like process stuff. I'm not a yeah. big not a big process guy this early in the season. Yeah. But the thing that sucks, and I think the thing for all the fans is it just feels like last year already. In that opening day did not feel like last year. Um but every game after that pretty much has felt like last year. And I think the fans are going to be so disappointed in that. Uh, and you even saw the fans disappointed that Davis isn't in the lineup today because he's provided the only little bit of hope. <laughs> I think that's where we were at. Um, but then YJ makes a good point. Are you, what are you going to do? Sit IKF, the guy you, the free agent signing that you brought in. But that's on Ross for bringing IKF games. in. Yeah, that is true. But. I guess you can think of it two ways. It's, hey, Ross told me I'm going to come in and play, and then you're sat within week one. It's going to be a bad luck for some other people, but uh, he's collecting $7.5 million this year, right? Yeah. Uh, it's 15 over two. I, I'm disappointed in this week, uh, but if we can get this out of the way and you don't have another stinker like this. Come on. It's obviously going to happen. It's a long It's a long season. Yes. But that is like the worst series possible. They did this thing besides the run scoring against the Rangers four games at home last yes. season. It felt kind of the same way. Just your teeth kicked in the whole time, but they yeah. couldn't win a game and they got swept in a four game set. Um, any like, w- what do you think about there's, you can't think anything good when you get, this is my thing, and I know people are going to be coming quick to blaming. I know some people are blaming the pitchers, but I, I feel like it's a consensus. You can't blame the pitching staff. Like, being a pitcher on this team and knowing that you have to pretty much go 
seven scoreless to give your team a chance to fucking win is bananas. Like yesterday, Jose Barrio shoved six innings or seven innings, one run, and got the no decision, dude. Like <laughs> he was in turn for the loss the whole time. You could have Jesus Christ himself come down and pitch, and he would still lose because the offense doesn't score. And I know, like, we're just ranting here, but it's mad. It's like we what we had to go through last year watching this offense and what this pitching staff had to go through last year watching this offense. It's hard to just like see it on the writing on the wall of it being the exact same thing, dude. Right? Like it just it, it's it's hard. It's tough to watch. It really is, man. It really is. Yeah, and then you see your Don on the other side, Pal Tucker on the other side, Jose Altuve swinging at balls over his helmet uh, for home runs twice this series. Yiner Diaz, a guy just in the minors for the last couple seasons. Dusty Baker refused to play him last season, yeah. and he's hitting 750 to start the season. Uh, it's tough because you have players that you think are as good as Kyle Tucker and your As good as your Dawn. Yeah, exactly. Like, Bo and Vlad, you think are as good as those two guys, and then you see a series where uh, – Jordan finally figures it out. I did a video today at work. It's like, do not worry about these guys. And I said, Jordan Alvarez was like, the biggest guy I was not worried about at all. You shouldn't be worried about people after one week in general. Like that's yes. Mike Wilner. It's early. It can't, it is so fucking early. And the team is three and four. Like it's not, it's not a winless start at least. Yeah. So, no, that's a good point. That's a good part to look at it. I'm just saying, all the fans ask for is at some point consistency, right? Like when you're losing games, lose 5-3, 6-4, 5-4. You can't, when you lose, you can't just be un, unserious when you lose. This, that's what this team is. Like when they lose games, they are unserious. They get fucking no hit and one hit. So far, that is what we have seen. And that is what the 169 or 171 game sample size has been for the past year and a bit that we have been watching this team. That's the harsh reality of it. Yeah, at this point, from what we've seen, it it seems like a mail-it-in in the sixth when you know they're cooked. Yes. Uh, the bats, yeah, don't tell. Tell a great story when they get down, and we haven't had a comeback win yet, uh, besides last night. Yeah. It feels, yeah, it's like, hey, you get down more than one, it's going to be tough for this team to come back. And all of this can change, man. This is, it's so, it is incredibly early. I will be Mike Wilner. Three and four, seven games into a 162 game season. Yes. It does suck. Like people come into the comments yesterday and said, oh, the Tigers are better than us. Um, the Tigers just like, look at the teams they've played. The Rays are a good team. Um, the Astros are obviously a good team as well. And then you get the Yankees next. And then you get the Mariners. There actually might not be a single run scored in that Mariner series. Um, <laughs> well, Kirby kind of got lit up. Yeah, what? I know, but they can't. <laughs> they didn't score very much. Uh, it's a horrible start to them. The upcoming schedule: Yankees, Mariners, Rockies, Yankees, Padres, Royals, Dodgers. But we said this though, Avery. Like again, I know you're bringing out the positives here. If this team finishes this road trip, five hundred, we're we have a different tune. It's unfortunate now that the 500 is going to have to result in a 2-1 series win in New York, who looks like the greatest team on the fucking planet right now. But it's a it's a different tune we're singing here if this team finishes 2-1. and one. But it's hard to not at least have negative thoughts after what you just yeah. watched. The you, as, a fan, you the have, you, the as a fan, you have a right to feel that. Yeah. The Jays uh, hit 106 this series, scored two runs, Slugged 183 and had zero hits with runners in scoring position. Zero. Not a single one. Is that good? No. And I, I get it. I know our comment section is going to be full of frustration. I know the, the TikTok comments, my mentions, all of that. And they have every right to be. I'm no, not, you should I'm, you should very well be frustrated. Yeah. And you have every right to be frustrated with a team that is in a quote unquote championship contender window. That is lackadaisical like this at the plate. But 
tons of teams last year looked good at the start of the year and then looked bad at the end, right? It's like it's ball. It's ball. There is so many fucking games, and I get that. I get that. But we judge things based off of how they're going right now, and right now this has been tough to watch. And you have every right to feel that. And this offense is like – what really pissed me off today was the Vladdy at bat. I'll be honest with you. Not to nag on a guy like, like this, uh, but – he four pitch walk the hitter before him, right? Four pitch walk. He gets a ball at his shoestring, swings through it, battled the rest of the at bat, runner in scoring position, and strikes out. It's like it at some point, man, you got you gotta fucking turn it on there. Like you got you gotta be the guy that you're supposed to be at a certain point. It's it, it that was frustrating. It was like I, I like let's look at uh, Vladdy. Yeah, it, it was a two out at bat as well. He missed what was a slider, uh, middle of the plate as well. And then the Astros are cheating with the amount they are throwing changeups. All of their pitchers have changeup rate has spiked a drastic amount, which is crazy. Yeah. How the Astros go about their pitching, and it's kind of different for the Rays. The Rays seem to go cutter heavy. It's like all their guys are throwing cutters now, and the Astros, everyone's throwing changeups and yeah. they have no they've had no chance with it um it's just man these at bats were tough to watch this series bro like they were bad um there's just no d- discrediting that there's just and i guarantee you those guys in the locker room would say the exact same thing uh yeah, yeah. it's uh it's tough man i i do want to have a discussion about a player uh kevin kiermeyer where are you at with him uh pretty bad start to the season for kevin kiermeyer he brings it with the glove. We've known that. Last year, he was great with the bat at this point of the season. He was really good early on. Um, a lot of double play balls. Uh, a lot of strikeouts. Kind of unserious approach, unserious at bats. I love KK, but man, this has been a very, very tough start to the season for Kevin Kiermaier. There's no denying that. No, you, you can't deny that. Um, so I want to tie in Kevin Kiermaier talk with why davis was sat today can we okay. do that yeah so if you want to you want to preface the davis schneider being sat uh from a surface level let's not look into any numbers how you feel about davis not well i'll just bring up a stat so kevin kiermeyer is two for his last 20 uh two for his last 20 with two four six with seven strikeouts or six strikeouts not great but so, anyways, uh, Jay's obviously we know Schneider game two hits that walk off, not walk off, but game winning home run against the Houston Astros. And today, John Schneider sits him, and Twitter is set aflame. It is set aflame. Um, obviously, they wanted the guy that has provided the only offense the entire series to play. And I get that. Again, I get that. Maybe there's a different perspective to it about wanting to play IKF, who you paid seven and a half million dollars. Kind of doesn't make sense to sit him uh, a week into him being a Toronto Blue Jay, but it's uh, the fans were mad about it and they wanted Schneider in the lineup. Maybe you can kind of talk him off of it, Avery. I don't know. Maybe or give the logic standpoint behind okay. Josh Schneider. If there yeah, is yeah. One. The logic standpoint from an analytics thing is there's a thing called induced vertical break in baseball and it is the theory theory it is the movement of the thought of when you throw a fastball if it looks like the ball's rising or the ball is dipping when you get there so induced vertical break is without gravity if it looks the more induced vertical break you have the more it looks like the ball is rising say like a rise ball in softball when the ball goes up um so that's how it looks david schneider's thing we even talked about it with him on here is the whole uh it's not it's not a lazy take but everyone just said okay it's it's up you pitch him up and Christian Javier has one of the best induced vertical break numbers on his fastball in all of baseball so he is really good at making the ball look like it's rising throwing his fastball at the top of the zone and David Schneider is not good at hitting it. He said it. it in his post game yesterday. Schneider did say that in his post game yesterday. He's not good at hitting it at the top of the zone. But there's another player on the team who's also bad at that, who has way less power potential, and that's Kevin Kiermeyer, uh, who hasn't been hitting well as um, as well. So my thought was, it makes sense the Davis thing, just based on what Javier has. He's really good 
um, and the IVB numbers are, are really great. So I think if you get up to 19 inches of induced vertical break, it's a good fastball. He has 21, averages 21 inches of induced vertical break on his fastball. So it's good. Yeah. So it made sense to me that they don't want him. They don't think that's a favorable matchup to him. Uh, but then you have Kevin Kiermeyer in there as well. Uh, Chris Bassett's going to give up some balls in play. Uh, so you want to have a good defense out there. It's not, it is a better defense when Davis isn't in left field. Like when you put Varsho out there, there's a play Varsho made slide and grab uh, coming into left on a blooper that I don't think Davis makes, but I think the power potential is just way better with Davis there. So I was, I talked myself into thinking it was a probably a better idea to keep him back in there. Okay. But playing devil's advocate, uh, the at bats can't get possibly worse with Davis in the lineup. No, Davis. Right? Yeah. The Davis at bats weren't great yesterday before the home run. I think yeah. He- no, but what I'm saying is though, is like, you, you had one hit anyways. Like that's what's going to enrage the fans even more is like, like Davis at least has that pop potential where Kevin Kiermeyer doesn't in the bottom part of that lineup. Right. Like that's the devil's advocate side of it. Right. I'm starting to think Daniel Vogelback should be getting a couple more at bats against a, he got a nice walk in the ninth there. It's it's hard for a guy to get hot like that, though, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't take much into account for a ninth inning at bat in a game you're down 100 runs, right? Yes. There, the, the level of your locked-inness is different at that point uh, for most of those guys playing that game. But I think you got to try and get him in there, and it doesn't make sense, really, position-wise, based on how Justin Turner has been at third base. Um, so it, it is just... The Davis thing, I'm happy that people can get mad about that. Uh, Davis wasn't scoring nine runs today by himself. Yeah, and but yeah, no that's a good point. It. It's just looking at it, it's tough. And I, another guy that I didn't want to talk about, Avery, that week is the Alejandro Kirk stuff. I mean, Alejandro Kirk is hitting this year. 0.095, 130 on base, 0.095 slugging with a 225 OPS. And this is a guy who looked good in the spring. Uh his average exit velo right now, 84 miles an hour, which is in the blue. Uh, he's expected batting average, 162. Expected slugging, 180. Woba, 125. X woba 177. With a 20% strikeout rate and a 13% hard hit rate. This is a guy who is, I saw Sportsnet tweets do this. He has a lower OPS since 2022 All-Star break than Luke Maley. Um where are you at here with Kirk? Because the sample size now is big enough because you're including last year to where it's like this guy is really, really struggling at the plate. Really struggling. Yeah, let's see the things that he's good at if he's still doing that as well. The at bats from everyone have been horrible, man. It's a it is a it's full, all lumped in one at the end of the day. It, it is. is a team. and I love thick Jesus. When he is good, this team go. He, when he goes, this team goes. That's not a hot take. He fucking rocks. But my God, the ground balls and hitting him and Varsho back to back, man. Yeah. I mean, the aura of the team is down. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's look. So, what he's good at is making contact in the zone. And 2022, he had his own contact percentage of 90.9%. Last season, got even better 93.8%. Like elite numbers there. Uh, and then this season he's at 80%. So he is, he's making soft contact. He is making less contact. Uh, so that is a tough start for, for Alejandro Kirk as well. I no no one's playing well at this point. No one. Like we said, they all slump together. They do. They all, they all slump together, Abe. It makes, can you make sense of it? No, I can't. Uh, but I know this is an old saying, and it's like I'm gonna get chirped and call it old head for this. But hitting truly is contagious. It really is. And I know this is stupid, and I'm old, old, old Johnny, whatever. But we see it with this team. We see it on Sunday. They started hitting. They put up a nine spot, right? Like if they're slumping, no one picks each other up. It, this series. There's no like spark. Maybe Schneids would be that 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 spark. Maybe Earned Dog. I don't know. But when this team is struggling, there has yet to be like, all right, let's snap out of this shit. And you made a good point. 
you can kind of tell when the game is over and if this team can hit or not by the second or third inning. That's when you could tell. It sucks. It sucks as a fan when you're in the third inning and they're nine up, nine down, or 11, 11 guys came up to the plate, nine outs, and you're just like, they're, that's, they're not hitting today. That's it. You could tell in the fucking third inning or second inning, man. Yeah, and you, you think it'll change at some point, but another another zero at this point. I I sucks that we watched all of those games. Like, uh, there's n- no other way to think about how shitty it was to watch all of that. And you were going to run into a buzzsaw. You were going to deal with the Astros finding their footing after getting swept. We yes. knew it. We didn't think it would take a, a no-hitter to get them back on their feet, but it took, like, it just a shit-kicking of the Blue Jays to do that. And, yeah, pulled fly ball home runs. And so many, like Kyle Tucker, Blue Pit, uh, Jordan broken bat yesterday as well. Just find, finding ways to do it. And I, when you watch a, one team the whole season, you can tell approach every time, right? Like you see a guy come up, oh, his approach sucks. And that's the problem. You don't watch another team. You have no idea if it's an approach thing or they're just – hitting shitty that time because i couldn't tell you the approach from the astros from watching them over three games so yeah they they just ambush guys as well right they ambush fastballs though that's they do well elevated fastballs albeit as well well but then fuck like do you throw them less fastballs the boston red sox are throwing a historically low amount of fastballs to start the season and their pitching staff's been great yeah pitching is such an intricate thing it is so fluid as teams want to deal with and game plan for hitters it's it's I've, i'll always love pitching because it's so different and teams can do it well in so many different ways and be successful and you see that with the red Sox right now you see cutters change ups coming back i don't know uh the bowden start they just ambush him on everything up attacked yeah attacked. i don't think at one point i was like okay i don't think this is game plan anymore all the fastballs up I think he was just missing spots, a little adrenaline. Yeah. He got. But back I will his- say though, I will say that's what makes a great hitting ball team. They attack a young guy like that. They ambush when he's throwing pitches in the zone, and that did we see last year? This team get carved up by uh, young guns that have they have not really a scouting report for. But that scouting report on Bowden was small. They just saw him last year out of the pen. They don't know what he's doing as a starter. I mean, maybe the couple spring training appearances, but. At the end of the day, dude, if you are blaming this pitching staff for anything, you are a delusional brain dead fan. <laughs> it's like the pitching is the bottom tier problem for this team right now. It is the approaches at the plate. It is the ability to string hits together. And it's the ability to hit, 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 hit with runners in scoring position. Those three things are what they haven't been able to do. And once they show that they're able to do this, not one fucking game like Sunday, a, an entire week, three game stretch, four game stretch. You just kind of keep hitting. They have not shown that. They have shown on and off days, and I don't think really good teams have that. Really good teams do not have such consistent off days at the plate. Yeah, look at the Dodgers, and I know it's a crazy comparison. <laughs> fine. Yeah. Look at the fucking Yankees. Like these teams that are supposed to be good that have. Decently constructed lineups, they pick each other up and they hit in timely situations. The Yankees today in extra innings, Aaron Judge hits a double to take the lead in extra innings. Juan Soto gets on. Verdugo, for Christ's sake, it's a two-run home run in extra innings. The the guys that you pick up in the offseason that are supposed to be dogs are supposed to be dogs. And I know it's still only two series in, but that's my thought process on the hitting of this team from what I have seen two series into the season. Yeah. Uh, the other part I wanted to chat about was manufacturing runs because they haven't been able to do that at all. They can't get anyone on base. They It was the Blue Jays and the Mets, I believe, were the only two teams not to attempt a stolen base as of today. Uh, Kevin Kiermaier attempted two of them back-to-back pitches when he got on in what I thought was the sixth or seventh inning and he stole a bag, but how can you manufacture runs, use your speed guys if they're not on base either? They're they're giving them no chances to create offense when you pop out every single at bat, it feels like. 
It feels like yesterday they didn't hit a ball out of the infield until like the ninth. I mean, I think no, Ernie but, had a but single. that makes sense. Like Framber's, the pitchers attack them how. This is a weird way to put this because it's obvious, but the Jays seemed like they gave in to what the pitchers wanted them to do. Framber Valdez, an elite ground ball pitcher, has been all his time as a starter, and the Blue Jays continued to just pound balls into the dirt, and they would pick up the ball at second base, fucking underhanded to first base. Let's get the fuck off the field and let's let's go hit again. Um, yeah. So that's it. I mean, that's the best recap we yeah. can do of the series. It, it's it's not to be doom and gloom. At the end of the day, man, we have fucking baseball on the TV. We'd kill for this well, in November. Watching the no hitter, it was like I would. That was hit. bad. That was, was like, bad. Yeah, I'll take an off day in November instead of watching. That yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go to the next series here. Uh, running into the buzzsaw, New York Yankees six and one fucking start. Uh, we got Kikuchi versus Stroman, which is going to be an electric matchup. Stroman opening day at Yankee Stadium. Uh, Gossman Schmidt, and I don't know who's going Sunday. It's Gill and whoever we have, Bowden, right? Gill and Bowden. Where are you out here with this? I'm back in if they beat Stroman on Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, let's look at some of the Yankees' average. Soto, 345. Volpe, 409. Oswaldo Cabrera, 346. Uh, Torres, 214, kind of decent, but Judge is really struggling. Other than that, though, man, it's like this Yankees bullpen's good. You go to this bullpen, you're going to be in for a tough one. Their starting pitcher is decent. Clark Schmidt, I'm not 100% sold on. Gill, I'm not 100% sold on. Stroman, he can be a dog when he has to be a dog. They got to win game one. Like, you got to beat Stroman at Yankee Stadium. Please, please beat this fucking guy. Yeah, it would be awesome if he just kind of ruins their opening day. Uh, I want to talk about game times. The worst set of game times for a three-game three weekend set. 1 o'clock Friday, 7 p.m. Saturday, and what is it, 1 o'clock again Sunday? One thirty-five Sunday. What the fuck are we doing here? Is like the if you're... Saturday game an ESPN game? Is that why? I don't it think has to be. I don't think they'd play ESPN games, right? Well, they do at Yankee Stadium. Okay. Interesting. I don't think so. Uh um, sure. But it makes sense. If you're going to play a night game on Saturday, it's the same time of year. Why don't you just play the night game on Friday as well? Uh, I think it's a tough Kikuchi matchup again. We need we need a little bit better outing from him, a little better command yes. uh, for Kikuchi. And it starts this is early. where he turned it around last year, remember? That started Yankee Stadium. I think he went six scoreless or six and one run. Uh, I, I'm going into this series positive, man. Because if I know this team, if I know baseball, they will somehow pull us back in by beating the fucking breaks out of the New York Yankees on Friday and just pull us all the way back in. I feel like it's just missing Jano a little bit. Yeah. Because I feel Jano would be the one to just shit all over the Yankees like he did. Was that last year too? Yeah. The home run at Yankee Stadium? Walk off. Uh, it's Vlad to hit a home run off Marcus Stroman. Oh, fucking chills. Um, How annoying do you think Marcus Stroman's going to be on that, on that game? Insufferable? Uh, probably if I had to get, yeah, he's if I had to take my guesses on how be. Marcus Stroman's going to be to watch against, I, I think uns insufferable is a, a pretty good, uh, for that one. Yeah. He's an insufferable human being. I'm going to say Jay's won the series two one. Okay. Fuck it. Give me hope. Let's go back. Let's get back to the Rogers Center 500, man. I think they lose to Stroman, win the next two. We get a Bowden bounce back game. Okay. <laughs> if, I wasn't mad with that Bowden start. I really wasn't. A lot of punch outs. Holy shit. Yeah, he did get punch outs. I forgot that he was just a three pitch guy. Yeah. Uh, and the two Austin pitches go the same way. Feels like we could we could work on something that goes the other way for. By the way, let's talk about this. Yario Rodriguez's first start in Buffalo. Hell yeah. My God. Uh it was it was very well timed after the game the Jays had the night before. And but again, the, uh, he, he can't hit. So it's like, you know, it's yeah, like I know, just, but yeah. people were like, oh, Bowden's done right away. You can't yeah. do that after one start. Like, like it's just so such relax. a stupid fucking mindset. If you think Bowden Francis is done, you're such a dumb idiot. But yeah. whatever, man. All right, we will be streaming on Sunday on the Gate 14 podcast, YouTube, grinding away, chipping away. 
Uh, and then, we'll have, if you guys are new to it, the Thursday uh, episodes are usually shorter. Um, yeah. They they don't get listened to as much. Sunday, when we go into the Monday, is uh, is the long. Is one. always the banger. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. so anyways, love you guys, man. Uh, please download Sports Interaction. Support the boys, man. The, the more interactions they get there, the better it looks for us. So uh, if you guys are riders, that's what you will do. Thank if you, you everyone yeah, if to- you are if you are gambling on stuff, sports interactions a good place to be because I like Tons the hits stuff. The hits runs RBI market. The live stuff is is good as well. It's yeah. it has some of the best baseball stuff you could bet on. It's so. e- oh, it's unreal. You could bet Ernie under strikeouts. Like no, I like, I've never seen that. Yeah, we've gambled everywhere. Like quite literally everywhere in yes. Ontario. You and I have. And I love the hits runs RBIs. They have. They have all the markets that you want to gamble on. Exactly. On so exactly. So, anyways, guys, uh, we have an announcement on Sunday about what we're going to be doing opening day, which is going to rock. Um, right? Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. can do that. So we will. We will chat Sunday night. Enjoy your weekend, man. Uh, let's beat the fucking brakes off of Marcus Stroman. Please. We deserve this off day tomorrow, everyone. Yeah, let's win the off day. Let's yeah. win the off day tomorrow. Love you guys, man. Uh. Heat 14 forever. Let's have ourselves a week.